Hi, I'm Dr. Ken, and this is a shoulder flip tutorial. The shoulder flip is one of my signature moves. I can't keep it out of my performances. It's a crowd pleaser and a lot of fun, so Merry Christmas. The prerequisite is a solid shoulder mount, but beyond that, it's quite doable with a proper redirection of momentum. The advanced stage where the shoulder doesn't contact the pole at all does take a lot of strength, but I will show you how to get up to that point. Let's break down contact points before going into the specifics. First, you'll be walking or even running towards the pole on the opposite side of your dominant shoulder. The outside hand contacts first in cup grip, while the inside hand weaves around to the front of the pole to also form a cup grip. The inside leg is a kicking leg, and when you finish the move, you'll end up in a lunge position with your legs and a weird grip with your hand should you choose to hold on. Breaking down the arms first, the alignment when you engage with your lats, pecs, and triceps is critical. To begin, after your outside hand contacts, bring yourself into the shoulder mount position by squeezing the elbows in when you pull. Now I've seen this done with true grip on top, but the rules still apply when you pull. Squeeze with the elbows in and engage with your force downwards. This allows your top hand to remain in true grip when you finish the move. I, however, prefer the top hand as cup grip, which will also remain in the cup grip position when you finish. As for your legs and hips, your inside leg kicks up and passes from the inside across to the shoulder mount side, the opposite side of the pole. Try to pass your hips right beside the pole when you're upside down, and keep the hips square. This is the hardest part. Also remember to keep your legs straight and do not scissor your legs after takeoff, which is common error. Keep your legs in the exact same position as they left off with, with one leg in front of the other, both legs straight and extended. If you must, you can bend the back leg a little. To figure out how your legs pass across the pole, start in a shoulder mount straddle position. Bring both legs to the shoulder mount side in a pike and roll your hips over, being ready to release your arms. Once you understand this, you can throw your legs a little bit and do this from a tuck to get used to the momentum. Also, take advantage of this moment to notice how your bottom hand ends up in weird grip. Be aware that if you try this too slowly, you will roll across your clavicle, which really hurts. You should be thrusting your hips forward and up in order to create space off your clavicle. Be careful as thrusting your hips creates a lot of momentum to flip your body around. So while you need to commit, be ready for the landing. This is my way of pretending I meant to land badly in this video. Here are some drills to teach you to commit. From a shoulder mount setup, hop and lift yourself towards the shoulder mount. However, begin to kick the shoulder mount leg higher and higher until you are almost inverting. Where you look is key to many pull techniques. Now start with your head slightly tucked and look back. You'll find it almost hard not to keep flipping. The biggest obstacle students seem to have with this is fear and getting their hips higher. This will help with both. It may take some time, so be patient with yourself. To begin, realize that just swinging your hips around the pole is the exact same motion and technique as the full one. It just doesn't look as cool. But if you keep jumping more and setting your kick higher, your hips will come closer and closer to the pole. You can worry about straight legs and pointed toes in good form after this. A common training buildup for this is to do this from the floor. I personally find this harder, but if fear is your obstacle, this might make it easier. Your shoulder mount side is a leg you'll kick with, and your other leg is what's pushing your hips up. Focus on jumping from that planted leg and sending your hips up before you look for the ground to step out. Again, I find this more difficult strength-wise than just standing tall. This next detail is the make or break for most of my students who are struggling with this technique. Your body will follow your head and eyes. Any martial artist would know this. So based on which direction we are looking and which direction we're turning our head, it can change the direction our momentum is being thrown. Play with this. See what happens to your technique. If you are having trouble getting your hips up, try looking away from the pole a little bit. Ideally, you'll be looking straight up in order to maximize your height as well as your hip alignment. But definitely don't look towards the pole if you're trying to perfect this move. Finally, it is best not to contact the clavicle at all. You do this by loading the arms until you're a little bit past the pole before you begin pulling. Your momentum will swing you around the pole before your shoulder even has time to touch the pole, and even if it does, it's not much. This is the most comfortable level of the move. Here are some harder variations. You can tuck, but also let go a little bit earlier, turning this into a backflip or even a gator motion. You can recapture the pole in a sit, spin, or whatever else people do with their legs on pole. Har, har, har. You can try doing this with straight legs together through the entire motion, or you can even try jumping into it from a distance. This move really is a lot of fun. Once again, this is Dr. Ken. Hopefully you enjoyed this tutorial. If you did, feel free to subscribe, like, and share this. Um, and since the last tutorial, uh, I started an athlete page. It's like Facebook, whatever user, Dr. Ken Pole Ninja. 
So feel free to look me up there. Um, that's where I'm showing all my newest developments, the crazy ideas that I'm playing around with. So yeah, we'll see you soon.